to trade Yaka Pirtle or not to trade him. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. We're right here on the Lockdown NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's Five Sanders. I'm glad to have you back. Happy MLK Day, everybody. Hope you're having a good day off and you're celebrating all things Dr. Martin Luther King today on this very special holiday. So, again, happy MLK Day. And what are we talking about today? We're going to be uh, giving Trey Jones some much needed love. We're going to go over some numbers. Uh, yeah, this guy has been playing incredible. Late. It's kind of been a quiet, solid string of games. Let me give you some numbers that will just make your eyes pop out. And then we're going to wrap up today's show about Yaka Pirtle. To trade him or not, there's a report via ESPN's Warjanowski that there's significant interest in Yaka. So we're going to go over the pros and cons of that. Who is helping me today? He is Rudy Campos with Sweep the League. Or should I say sweep IKEA department store? Because that's where Rudy's at. Right He's at IKEA right now, everybody. Yeah, we're, we're coming to you live from the IKEA studios in Live Oak, Texas. Uh, I, I jumped in because, you know, Jeff wants me a part of this. So I've got to make things happen. I'm on the road day. It's a road game for me today. You know what you could do? Like maybe like sit on one of the uh, pre made couches and just chill. And, <laughs> and don't, they, don't they have like food service and everything? They got it all here. I've been to IKEA yeah. a couple of times, and they've got everything, but the loud it's too loud in there, so I had to come to the parking lot and give you the parking lot version of uh, Lockdown Spurs. Well, I hope you have your, at least your AC on to keep you cool in the heat. Oh, yes, yes. AC is a must in Texas. All right. Uh, once again, you can follow him on Twitter at Sweep the League, and we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever we get podcasts. Now, we're going to make this a very quick show because Rudy has to get some shopping done, so let's jump into it. Uh, Trey Jones talked about him to start off this show. I, I mean, Rudy, there's going under the radar and then there's going under the radar. What he has been doing in the last stretch of few games has been just eye opening. I mean, just so eye opening. I'm going to give you the game log. Okay. This is what Trey Jones has done in the last, well, five games, six games. I'll give another six games. So we're going to go in reverse order. So the most recent to the uh, to the uh, the longest. So versus the Warriors in that loss at the Alamo Dome, 21 points, five assists, a rebound. Versus Memphis, 22.6 rebounds, six assists, three steals. Again, in that first Memphis meeting, 18 points, four rebounds, seven assists. Versus Boston, 18 points, five rebounds, five assists. Versus Detroit, 25 points, three rebounds, three assists. And then at New York, 14 points, four rebounds, six assists, and a steal. Wow. What he has been doing this season, especially in the last few games, has really is really making him perhaps the point guard of the future for this team, Rudy. A hundred percent agree. And I hate the fact I've already gotten a lot of death threats from Tar Heel Nation. So I, I <laughs> thank you very much for making me always show love on a blue devil here but trey jones i mean we we've labeled him and i've labeled him mr consistent for the san antonio spurs i mean you've seen the last six games he's putting up numbers that are unprecedented when it comes to a guy who should have been just a backup point guard he's Mm -hmm. solidifying that starting point guard position i know we mentioned blake wesley coming in taking over those roles but i think it's still going to be another year or two trey jones doing a magnificent job for the san antonio spurs he's been that guy for the team this year I you really can't say much more about him. I mean, he's doing everything. And the main key, Jeff, is his turnovers are super low, which is fantastic for a team that's in a rebuild. Yeah, yeah. I keep it those turnovers low. Uh, the most he's had in recent games was January 6th versus Detroit. He had four. But he only had two versus Golden State, the Alamo Dome. None versus Memphis in that last home, that home-home Memphis series they had. And then um, I think he only had two in that first Memphis Memphis, Memphis game set that the Spurs just finished. So he's doing it all. And you're starting to see him connect a little bit more in his three. Now, it's not eye-opening. It's not Steph Curry level. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, two for two from the three line uh, versus the Warriors. Two for five versus the Grizzlies. One for four for, uh, again, at the Grizzlies in that first Memphis game. So he's starting to perhaps maybe show signs of knocking on that three. Uh, he spoke about it recently. One of the recent games that his outside shot, specifically the three shot, still is a work in progress. 
But in my opinion, Rudy, I think if he starts knocking down that three shot with regularity, if he gets you at least two to three makes a game, that's just going to take his game to the next level. Rudy, your thoughts? Yeah, for sure. He's got to develop that three-point shot, and it's something that comes within time. There's not a whole lot of sharpshooters. You don't have a Steph Curry or Clay Thompson coming in from college where you can guarantee you know, they're going to make a good amount of threes. It's always going to have to be developed. The change is always going to have to be there. But with Trey, if he can develop that three-point shot, it's going to add another dynamic to his game. It's going to help the San Antonio Spurs just be that much better. But, you know, the one thing that we've got to keep in mind is, is Trey a part of that future build? Um, I mean, if you go into the draft, per se, and you got the second pick, and you bring in a Scoot Henderson, that kind of makes Trey a little bit more expendable. Uh, you can get some really good value with him. But as of right now, I mean, he's doing it all. And the three-point uh, shot will come within time. It's going to take a little bit of time, but it'll, it'll come. I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it at all. But in the last six games, he has not missed a free throw. He has not missed a free throw. He went five for five versus the Warriors, two for two versus Memphis, five for five versus Memphis again, January 9th, two for two versus Boston, two for two versus Detroit, two for two versus the Knicks in MSG. He's knocking down those free throws. They call them free for a reason because they're free shots Mm -hmm. and he's making them. So, you know, he's putting it together on the three line slowly, but surely, you know, not there yet. He's definitely Mm -hmm. knocking down his free throws for sure. The numbers prove that turnovers low. We talked about this before. It begs the question again, is he the point guard for this rebuild? If you're asking me right now and the way the season has gone so far, I even go into last year, the end of the year. I say he is that point guard. He He's proving he can get it done. Now, look at the fact that he had, what, a couple of turnovers and no turnovers against uh, Golden State. You're talking about Steph Curry, Jordan Poole, those guys that are playing at that position. He had no turnovers against John ja Morant when he came back. So against the better point guards of the league, he's shining. And in some instances, he's doing more than what's expected of him. So I think he is that point guard of the future for the Spurs. He would be a really good starting point guard for them. But the key thing that I want to ask for a lot of the uh, listeners out there is this. With Trey Jones, the way he's playing, it I mean, to me, it feels like you're getting DeJounte Murray type of production early in Murray's career. So, I mean, you know, the thing is, you've got all this good value for Murray. And Mm -hmm. now you've got Trey who's fitting right in. I think Trey's the guy, and he's not going to be – as high, highly, I guess, uh, sought after in free agency. This person gave him a really good contract, team-friendly deal. And he's the type of guy, he's one of those loyal guys, I believe. He's really loves San Antonio and he wants to stay. So I say keep him. Everything I think perhaps gets into flux if the Spurs get Scoot Henderson. I think if the Spurs land at number two or for some reason they go number one and they go Scoot. And crazier things have happened. Uh, either way, if for some reason they get Scoot Henderson, that really puts a wrench in things. Because then what, do you push Scoot as your primary point guard and then Jones backing him up, which would be a solid backup. But then you're Jones, you're like, oh my God, I put up all those great numbers for the Spurs last season. Now I'm really getting to a backup point guard when he's clearly point guard, starting point guard material. All yeah. in all, look, you got to tip your cap to Trey Jones. That's what we're doing here right now. He is putting in the numbers. We want to hear what you think. Is he the point guard of the future? How does Scoot Henderson perhaps throw a wrench in all this? And yeah, is he uh, for the Spurs moving forward? Let Rudy know on Twitter at Sweep the League. Let me know on Twitter at I uh, at Jeff G Spurs Zone. When we get back, uh, we're going to look at the uh, latest trade rumor mill. Uh, this time it revolves around Jakob Perto. Not too much surprise, but we'll hear what Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN had to say about the big man in the middle. But before we do into, get into all that, I want to talk to you about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. What you have to do is simple. You just pick two to six players, and if they go to score more or less than the prize pick projection, you go up to 25 times your money on any entry. You're not competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on any sport you watch, NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com right now to sign up for daily fantasy sports. First time users get themselves a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. 
If you deposit 100, price pick gives you 100. You give them 50, price picks will give you $50. Don't forget promo code locked on to sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. We're back with Rudy Campos right here on Lockdown Spurs and apparently also from Ikea. So this is the uh, <laughs> Ikea. Yeah. Show's it's, it's, a road, it's, yeah Ikea. it's Yeah, it's a, road, it's a road game for Rudy right now. It's a road it show. definitely is a road game. It feels like a road game. I'm coming to a hostile environment because my wife has my credit cards and you've got Uh-oh. me outside. And she's I mean, well, let's hurry this up. Well, let's get you out of here. <laughs> I, I, I feel that. So – there, uh, the trade deadline is uh, coming up fast and furious. It, it's around the corner, and we know the usual suspects to start. Even preseason, at the end of last season to now, it's been Jakob Pertl, Doug McDermott, Josh Richardson. Those are the three main targets that many think that will likely get dealt. But Pertl's name popped up recently via Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN. They did a uh, roundtable, so to speak, on the NBA uh, rumor mill, and in that segment. Pertle's name came up. And according to Wojnowski, and I'm par- paraphrasing, paraphrasing here, there's significant interest in Pertle that he can demand uh, some a lot more of a big payday should he just, you know, go into unrestricted free agency this offseason. Teams that need size to contend with teams at half size that they'll likely face, like your Denver's with Yoke, Joker, Embiid, Giannis. Uh, Proto would definitely fit in for a playoff contending team that just needs size to compete with the size they're likely going to face. So we're starting with the pros. Why, Rudy Campos, should the Spurs go ahead and entertain and trade Jakob Proto? As probably your best trade asset, Jakob Proto is number one target for a lot of teams, especially teams in playoff contention and even title contending teams. His value will probably not be any higher than what it is right now. Jakob is a great locker room guy. He's a fantastic teammate. On the offensive side, he's probably one, if not the absolute best pick and roll guy. Sets a great screen that would be so beneficial for teams that have shooters coming off the screens. On the defensive side, definitely one of the most underrated uh, defenders uh, down below in the post. Gets a lot of block shots. It just makes it really tough for guys to get to the hole and finish at the bucket. Jakob does a lot of good things that a lot of teams need right now. So the biggest pro is that he's going to bring you in, can't say a boatload of uh, picks and everything, but he's going to bring you in some definitely good picks, probably a first, maybe a couple of seconds as well, and maybe also another veteran type player or a young player. Uh, It's just something that right now, if it has to be done, I understand the Spurs aren't going to go anywhere anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So you want to get as much value as you can because the key word is unrestricted. And if he's going to be an unrestricted free agent, you're going to lose him for nothing. So definitely, if you're going to feel like you're not going to be able to keep him, you've got to get the most value for him. He already signaled that uh, he is open to entertaining uh, unrestricted free agency uh, ahead of the beginning of this season. He spoke with Austrian media to say, like, I'm aware of my situation and it's something I've never been in before, unrestricted free agency. And that he would like to see what his worth is. So, and by the way, he did make it very clear he would like to stay in San Antonio. So let's be fair to Jakob. So, yeah, I mean, the pros are, are as you nailed it right there, you know, what he brings to a team on the court. He's still young, 27 years old, and he's averaging currently through 34 games, nearly 12 points per game, 10 rebounds per game, 2.9 assists. And he's already collected 29 steals and recorded 41 blocks on the season. Three and a half offensive rebounds. He's one of the best offensive rebounding bigs in the NBA and shooting about 62%. You're not going to get any mid uh, outside shots from him. Very rare would he take a three shot. The last time he took a three was last season and he made it and he's shooting the thousand percent right now. That was the last time he shot a three was last year, but you don't really get much outside of the paint. That is his biggest knock. I think you, 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 um, if we're on the pro side of trading him, you do it. I, I, I collect more assets for me because winning the Wimby sweepstakes is not a guarantee. If this was the NFL, you, you know, and you know, where the worst team gets that first pick for sure, no matter what, but I say, yeah, go for it. You know, you got nothing to lose everything to gain, but because everything's kind of up in the air, if we're going to the basketball gods smiling on San Antonio, that ping pong ball falls their way, then it's it's kind of a gamble because you trade away a great big for the hope 
of getting Jakob. But and this is again the pro trade him. You do it, you accumulate those assets, you miss out on Wemby, but guess what? Whether you get those picks this season or next season or the, the season after that, you're going to have top quality picks. And I think holding him out until the very end to drive up his uh, his stock is something the Spurs got to do if they're entertaining it. Uh, look, he's probably going to command a big penny if he enters re- unrestricted free agency. And not to say the Spurs cannot afford it. because They can. They got a lot of money. But if they're looking to rebuild, then you're right. Trading Pirtle is the right thing to do. Yeah, but we're not done talking about this. We're going to look at the other side of why the Spurs should not trade Pirtle on this episode of Locked On Spurs with Rudy Campos of Sweep the League. Make sure to follow Rudy on Twitter at Sweep the League. Before we continue, I want to talk to you about Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. Look, just got through the holidays. If your goal is to eat a little healthier this year, Built Bar is for you. You uh, don't want to compromise taste. I get that. Then that's where Built comes in because it's healthy, but it's actually tasty. They got these delicious flavors that you're going to think that they're not good for you, but actually they are for you. They're perfect for the New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% chocolate, Oreo chocolate, that is. And they come in great flavors such as churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how Bill does it. These bars taste like a candy bar while remaining uh, and obtaining and having amazing macros. They're better for you. They're healthy for you. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, a whopping 17 grams of protein. Don't need to wait around anymore to get a box. For years, they've been talking about Bill Bars at Bill.com, but now you can get them at Walmart and Sam's Club and head to the nearest Walmart today. Go by the pharmacy section, grab yourself a box of Bill Bars. They got the four-bar box, which includes cookies and creams, double chocolate, and coconut puffs. But if you're close to a Sam's Club, grab yourself a 13-bar box with flavors such as brownie batter, churro. You can thank me later. We're back right here on Lockdown Spurs with Rudy Campos of Sweep the Lake and the newest mascot of Ikea. Congratulations, Rudy. (laughs) Yeah, they uh, when I walked out, they were giving me the Swedish meatball mascot outfit, so I need to see if it fits uh, fits me now. Again, uh, we're kind of on a little bit of a uh, fast-forward edition, a little speedier, because Rudy has to go. He has some shopping to do with his family, so please forgive us. <laughs> uh, we looked at some of the pros of why the Spurs should trade him. Let's look at the cons now to wrap up this episode of Locked on Spurs. Uh, I'll, I'll kick things off here. I think cons is because, like I kind of hinted in the last segment, getting Wimby is not 100%. 100%. Mm-hmm. And if you try to weigh one of the better centers in the league for draft picks, yeah, that's great, and that's awesome, that's fun. You can package those, you can perhaps select somebody, but it's not going to be a generational talent unless there's going to be another one in the future that we don't know about, we don't hear about. So there's that. So the risk of losing a great center for whiffing on Wemby or perhaps even whiffing on Scoot, if that happens, then you're left with a bunch of draft picks. So, that you know, that's a little risky. And then, two, how do they fit? Let's just say you bring in Wemby and and, and and you got Jakob. You know, how would that fit work? Do you push Wemby at the four? Do you keep uh, Jakob at the five? There's a fit in situation there. I'm pretty sure that's a great problem the Spurs would love to have. And then cons, I think he's still young. You know, he still has many years ahead of him. And those can be valuable. What I like about Jakob, too, that he's durable. He's never, for a big man at his size and his position and the battles that he has to take, he's been incredibly healthy and just mm-hmm. durable. This is not AD. This is not the AD that you tap him on the shoulder and he's out for a month. <laughs> You know, so you're going to lose yourself a durable, reliable, consistent, underrated, highly valuable big in the NBA. Uh, it's a little risky for me. What do you think, Rudy? You know, this is part where I'm going to have a little rant, not a bad rant, but a little rant here. And this is a fact. You, you, you nailed it, Wemby. So the good thing about it is free agency doesn't start till after the draft happens. So if you don't land Wemby, then – all of your eggs and everything need to be in that Jakob basket. So you can hit him up on free agency. Like, this is what we can offer you. If I'm not mistaken, the Spurs can offer him the most money out of any team right, going yeah. into the off season. So mm-hmm. that's a benefit right there. But here's the thing with Wimbayama. Even if you land Wimbayama, 
What is the guarantee that he will only yeah, he will stay longer than four years in San Antonio? There's not a guarantee. Show me loyalty beyond a Giannis Antetokounmpo, a Nikola Jokic, or even a Steph Curry. Show me more loyalty from the bigger guys. This is supposed to be a generational talent. Last generational talent we saw was LeBron James. Remind me how many teams he's been on already. So the loyalty thing that you have to figure in is, is Victor with Miami, and don't give me the French connection BS that I hear between him and Parker. It doesn't matter. The thing is, you got to remember, is he going to be loyal to San Antonio longer than the four-year contract he's going to get as a rookie? If he doesn't like it here, he's going to want a bigger market. He's going to go. Jakob is a team guy. So if you don't win the win by Yama Weepstakes, you go after Jakob completely. Even if you do, you've got to have that in the back of your head. Is he going to stay for the entire term of this rebuild? They're not going to be you know, a contender next year if they get him. They may not be a contender two years after that. So that's my biggest con is the uh, letting him go because of the uncertainty. I think Scoot Henderson is more of a loyal guy than Wimbayama is just by, you know, by what I'm reading and stuff. But mm-hmm. I'm going to leave everybody with this thought here. You can scream Tim Duncan to me all day. You can scream David Robbins to me, George Gervin, all the legends all day. Yes. But let's not forget the fact. I love Timmy to death. He's one. He's the greatest player, one of the greatest power forwards, if not the greatest power of all time. I'm so glad he made his home in San Antonio. But there was a moment that he was gone and gone, not thinking of leaving, gone. So even the most, you know, decorated guy in Spurs history and one of the most decorated guys in NBA history wasn't fully committed to the San Antonio Spurs. So mm. keep that in mind. When Bayama pick is sexy, it's awesome, it's fantastic, it's going to sell tickets, but for how long? You mm. know Jakob's going to be here for the long run. Exactly, yeah. And and, and cheaper. Uh, Wimby is like, you're going to drive up a, a big price. If he is yep. that generational talent and he hits that free agency, as you mentioned. But uh, for me, it, it, it really just comes down to that risk of missing out on the number one pick. That's what it really, really comes down to. And, uh, you, you know, you know, the Spurs, you know. Well, reminder, will, when the Spurs, the, yeah. when the Spurs, uh, when the, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But remember, no, no, go ahead, reminder, go ahead. When the Spurs drafted Tim Duncan, they were the third worst team in the NBA. So they didn't have the best odds to win the lottery. They want. They were the third worst team in the NBA, so you don't necessarily have to be the worst team to get that top pick. It doesn't always mm-hmm. happen that way. So, and remember, it's not much of a difference between one through three as far as ping pong balls go. Right. So it doesn't mean like you have to be the worst. Just you got to be in the top three to have a legitimate shot to get Wambayama. Yeah, there's so many pros and cons, uh, but we want to hear from you. What do you think? Uh, what are the pros and cons about trading Yaka Pertle? Look. The Spurs will likely get themselves a very nice haul back. You know, look what they got for DeJounte Murray. I, you know, maybe not be at that level, but it could get close to it if these uh, playoff teams are desperate enough to want to have a legit big to battle against the playoff bigs. And they could, Spurs, drive up that Jakob Pirtle price. We want to hear from you. To trade Jakob or not, you can let Rudy know on Twitter at Sweep the League. Tell us about Sweep the League, Rudy. Yeah, Sweep the League comes with you. We release episodes every single Sunday, and we also release them on Wednesdays. It just kind of depends. We always make the announcement on Twitter. Uh, It's NFL time, NFL playoffs. We're talking NFL playoffs. We're getting some NBA talk. we got a lot of other talk coming up, too. But shout out, like I always do, 50th anniversary, San Antonio Spurs. They just broke the biggest dome record, 68,000 plus at the dome. Congratulations, San Antonio Spurs. I'm going to name a few guys from way back then because, you know what, the dome is not home. The Hemisphere Arena was exactly. the original home. Exactly. So how can we not go over guys like Paul Griffith and Kobe Dietrich, Captain Late, James Silas, I mean, Larry Keenan, Mike Mitchell, Mike Gale. I mean, those guys are the guys that laid the foundation for the teams that you have now going into the future for the San Antonio Spurs. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it was such a good thing. I was able to go to the... Uh, the yeah, game of the dome. Uh, it, I had to be very clear to a lot of the kids. I go, that was not the OG Alamo Dome experience. Um, no. As I would say, you know, back in my day, we didn't have a full dome. We had half a curtain with a blue, it was blue and we liked it and that's it. But hey, it was still fun to uh, experience that. Uh, fans were beaming about it and it was just about celebrating the Spurs anniversary. So. It was good. By the way, my press seat was behind Sean Elliott and Avery Johnson. So 
I oh, wow. Day. Yeah, it was cool. Shout out Spurs for giving me a four seat. Appreciate that. San Antonio Spurs. And uh, yeah, subscribe to Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes. The list goes on and on. And don't forget to make your second listen be Locked On NBA. So for Rudy Campos via IKEA, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. Thank <laughs> you.